Everybody, we are back. It is Taped on Live's favorite is podcast, favorite is channel, favorite is everything. We are back. You guys already know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the like button if you like it. Hit the dislike button if you don't like it. Leave a comment if you like it. Leave a comment if you don't like it. Also, follow us on Twitter at the Mark John NFL for me, at mholder95 for Matt, and, of course, pandasubs.com. Discount code TDL for 35% off. All right, guys. So... <clears throat> You know, it's it's during the week. We know we're doing um, kind of free agency. Free agency is kind of over, but we got some guys to break down this week. That you know, we have some signings. You know, we were going to do all Gardner Minshew, but then on Monday they just had to throw us a little uh, spin. So you're doing Gardner Minshew today and Alex. Was it Madison? Right? As I said, Madison, there we right? go. There we go. Alex Madison. See, I, I practice, guys. You guys can't get on me about saying names wrong. I practice. I got it right. Alex Madison. We're doing them. Them two guys. So. We're going to be breaking them down, seeing what Gardner Minshew looks like, see what Madison looks like. And uh, it's going to be interesting to uh, see what's going on here. I mean, really nothing else is going on with the Raiders. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, not at all. I feel like it's been pretty quiet, like, across the league. Like, you look at, like, a lot of, like, like, I feel like there's a lot of, like, like inactivity. Like, we obviously got that first wave and then been pretty dead, like, for the most part. I mean, a few moves here and there, but, like, you go even on, like, our lads and, like, you'll see, like, most teams only have a few free agents that they that they brought in, and obviously that's where the Raiders are at too. So, I don't know. It's weird. I wonder if uh, people are pricing themselves out of the market. Like the middle kind of gets cut and whatnot. Like guys, guys like Dalton Reisner. Maybe that's why he's complaining about it online about him not getting a contract or whatever. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, teams are going for the hot top, uh, the high end guys and the cheap ones. And you know, like I said, middle kind of gets cut. So, I don't know, yeah, it's weird. I'm surprised about Dalton Reisner. He plays well every time he plays. That's, that's a weird thing. He must have some kind of attitude problem we don't know about. There must be something there. I think there might be because, like, if you remember, like, like one, like you said, he's been a good player and still available. Hat was in this situation last year, and I think mm-hmm. part of that was injury injury related because I think he got banged up at the end of last year. But like, if you remember too, like at the end of his time with the Broncos, he had like that blow up on the sideline, like yeah, and like this stuff. Like, I feel like there's something we don't see where maybe he's just like not a good locker room guy and maybe that's that's part of it but yeah yeah because he'd be a guy that i mean especially if he's still available after the draft like he was last year Mm -hmm. worth kicking the tires on and bringing in it's just yeah (laughs) then again if he's a cancer (laughs) maybe maybe not but uh but yeah i feel like there's got to be a little something a little bit more with him it's it's weird because he should be he should be signed already yeah for sure man um so uh, something else. I mean, Daniel Jeremiah did his little mock draft. Mel Kuyper did one too. So we'll talk about those two mock drafts. Daniel Jeremiah had Michael Penix going at 13, which I thought was super interesting. Um, he even like admitted it was a reach during his uh during his little breakdown. And then but uh Mel Kuyper had the Raiders taking JC Latham. All right. So uh Kuyper's feels a little bit more realistic. I can see them taking JC Latham. They need a right tackle. This I mean, right tackle class is probably, you know one of the best, I mean, just pure right tackle classes that we've seen with some guys like, you know, uh, Fuaga, but even though Fuaga, they might, people are thinking about moving him inside the guard, but, you know, Latham and even Mims, you know, those are some of those uh, type of guys that are out there for right tackle and you got to get a tackle in the first round. I, you know, some people, they want to, you think you could find tackles in the third and second, but if you want a premier tackle, you got to get them in the first round, in my opinion. So what are your thoughts on some of those? I mean, the Penix one was interesting, but um, I don't know if they made yeah. that. Thousand percent, excuse me. Thousand percent agree. I think I said it last time. At thirteen, I think he's a possibility. I think, but I thousand percent agree that he'd be a reach. It'd be a little bit rich for what I think. But I think the what makes it more realistic is if those top four quarterbacks do go. I think if you're the Raiders, like just naturally, you might panic a little bit. Like you're like Mm -hmm. you can sit there and you can say like, well, let's just wait and see if this guy's available in the back half of the first and try and trade up, or, or if he's around in the second round on day two. But then again, when I think when you see like quarterbacks fly off the board and all of a sudden one falls in your lap at 13, I feel like they could definitely strike. And I mean, the one thing I will say, too, is like, like you said, this tackle class in general is pretty deep. So I do think maybe like if you went with like a Penix and then like a, a Kingsley Samatamia or something like that. Yeah. Uh, granted, he's mainly a left tackle. Uh, mm-hmm. Like you said, like a lot of the really good right tackles, like uh, like a Fuaga, like a uh, JC and a. Um, and Mims, like those guys are gonna yeah. be first round guys, but there is at least some quality guys that you can get in the second round where you could potentially at least have them come in and compete with Thayer Munford to start, or maybe you move Thayer Munford guard. But um, 
but yeah, I, I, I can definitely see the, the more we get closer to the draft and like the more it's like, okay, it's looking like you're going to have to trade up to like the top five to get JJ McCarthy. Like the more <laughs> the, the readers sitting there being like, yeah, we kind of need to take quarterback right now, even if it is Penix and we do have a second round grade on him. We just kind of have to pull the trigger because, you know, every team that's uh, in the quarterback market, it feels like has more ammo than they do to trade up and mm-hmm. get ahead of them. So I can see the panic start to set in and, all of a sudden, they just take whoever whoever's available at thirteen, which is the right. uh, yeah, I, I hope they don't do that. I, 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 if if they do that, I really hope they really really like Penix. Like that has to be like something that they they are in love with him. They feel like he's the best quarterback on the board. It has to be one of those things to me. If they <laughs> feel that way, that's fine. You know, I, I think that's if if they did their evaluation, they got to know him because we still got a little bit. Of, uh, we got a little bit to go here. I mean, we got like about five weeks, I believe. So yeah, um, no more than most, it, yeah. Yeah, so if they can do that research, I mean, I mean, I don't know when his pro day is. Uh, probably like next week. I, I bet uh, as it happened, we'll see how many of the Raiders go there. Because I mean, they sent somebody to Bo Nix. Um, you know, they 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 had James Craig was coaching Tyler Guyton. You know, so uh, <laughs> I thought that was super interesting. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I mean, he's out there coaching him up and basically putting him through drills. So obviously, they really like Guyton. There's something there with them. Um, you know, uh, who's he's a, he's a good player. He's a good player, but. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, it's just I don't know if I would take him at 13, but he is a he is a good player. He has a lot of upside. He could probably be a pretty good damn tackle. But um, we'll, we'll see how they travel to this pro day. If it's like all of them, like let's say it's in the OC or something like that, it's good. That that that's when the flags start going up for me. Is when yeah, yeah, you know, you send a quarterback coach to uh, Oregon to watch Knicks. How many guys do you send to watch Penix? Right, and, and people people act like oh that's not a big deal, but Keep, let's keep it real. I mean, if they're going to different places, I mean, everybody's freaking out because Antonio Pierce went to go watch Latu, you know, and we don't even know if he was just supporting Foster or going to watch Latu. We don't know that. Um, but everybody's assuming that we're going to draft Latu now. I just, I've seen that a lot, which doesn't make any sense. But I mean, I UCLA know. also has a few other guys that, that, that are worth taking and take a look at, but too, but yeah. But yeah, yeah. yeah. I know I, I hear you. I, I think kind of like what, like what you're saying too, like, who goes matters a little bit too. Like when it's the head coach, like that carries a little bit more weight. Like it's funny. I was talking with Bill earlier and he keeps having me like, basically I'm on Antonio Pierce, uh, pro day tracker. Like anyone he goes to, he wants me to, wants me to just kind of give a lowdown just because it's like, look, and I mean, Bill's been in this game for, for several yeah. years. He's like, look, head coaches don't go to a ton of pro days. Like unless it's like a quarterback and they need one, like obviously then they're going to go, but they're not like usually at them. And I mean, you want to get into it like Pierce was just at Miami's Miami's doesn't have Miami doesn't have a single first round pick this year uh for hmm. play, prospect this year so unless you oh, count kitchens maybe who's at Miami's hmm so was he watching was he watching Cohen the guard because that dude he, uh he's... they have a couple guards one the Cohen's the better one uh um, mm-hmm. that Cohen's the Alabama transfer right yeah yeah uh-huh yeah 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 Cohen Pretty the better film. one and then uh, I haven't watched him but um they have him Kitchens, who I don't think will be on the radar because he's free safety. But uh guy that's intriguing is James Williams. He's their big safety. He's like, I think he was I think he was 6'5, 215 at Miami, or that's what he's listed at. And then I think at the okay. combine, he's like 6'5, uh, 230, played linebacker at the senior bowl. Pretty rough at the senior bowl. It looked like a guy who had played linebacker before <laughs> the linebacker before, but again, AP being a, a linebacker, a former linebacker coach, former linebacker, like kind of tells you a little bit maybe they're intrigued by him and intrigued by his potential because you know and the with the Raiders linebackers right now you wouldn't have to have, have to play him right away and if he's a good cover guy then who knows you kind of be like what they want Isaiah Paul Mau to be but even bigger yeah 100 percent yeah because that would tell us a lot if we see Getsy at Michael Penix because I, I know they're gonna go to Daniels right you know they're all gonna go to Daniels right I mean that's yeah. not yeah yeah that, that's not a crazy thing, but if we see like Getsy and uh, Rich Scrag, I might just say his name because I'm already say it wrong. But <laughs> and the quarterback coach, if we see both of them at Penix's pro day, then, then you know I'm gonna my antenna is gonna go up. I'm like, okay, all right. So they're really looking at him, and they're gonna take uh, take a chance. I mean, that I mean they might trade up from the second round. It, it, who knows? But I still think he's gonna go second round because that's that's what DJ said too. Is that he, everybody's telling me he's gonna go in second round? But I'm going to take him here. So, you know, that's the assumption, right? So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But, you know, I wouldn't mind Penix. You know, some people, people are asking me, like, what would you think of Penix? You know, I have my, my you know, kind of concerns about him, but I wouldn't mind it. 
Like he still yeah. has a big arm. He can still make every throw in uh in the league. He he has the arm for it, right? Um, you know, yeah. you can talk about all the little quirks he has, maybe, but at the end of the day, he has a huge arm. And and most guys who have huge arms in today's NFL end up pretty good. I mean, you could even talk about Will Levis, man. Like Levis, you know, we he had his quirks and he came out there and he had some good games because he has a huge arm and he was making some crazy throws because he can make every throw on the field. And if you can do that, then there's something there that you can work with. So I, it, it wouldn't bother me that much. Um, but you know, I, I just hope they get him at the right spot, not at 13. And if they want to trade back or something and get him, I, that's fine. You want If you want to trade back into the late first round, I agree with that. That's fine. Get the fifth year option. But uh, yeah, he just I just don't want to. 13 is just so rich, man. It's rich. No. I mean, yeah, dude. All right, man. So let's get into these uh, free agents that we have coming in. So number one, uh, Gardner Minshew, who is, uh, you know, that's, uh, like I said, uh, Minshew Mania has already taken over Raider yeah. Nation. I, I, it's, uh, we're here. Everybody's already crowning him. Some guys already say he's an upgrade over Aiden O'Connell already. I read a couple articles saying that. People say he's QB1. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to have to ride with Minshew if we don't draft somebody. So, Matt, I, I watched the film. Um and I know how I feel. Well, how do you feel about that after you watch it? How do you feel? I mean, I think he'll go into camp as QB1 because you uh-huh. don't pay a guy $15 million guaranteed, $25 million over two years to to ride the bench or to kind of start the year riding the bench. Like, But I don't think it's the slam dunk like, oh, Aiden O'Connell, or he's better than Aiden O'Connell. Like, it might be a little bit now, but I feel like Aiden, like as we, we've, talked, we've talked crap about Aiden's arm, uh-huh. Gardner Minshew's is worse. Like yeah. a lot worse. Like we're gonna get into it too. Like there's one pass, and I'll give you guys fair warning where I felt so bad for uh Michael Pittman Jr. Like he like Garner Minshew, like you'll see it, and it's because he doesn't have a great arm, like put him in the hospital. I think literally, and uh uh Pittman got like late and Pittman, I think pretty sure missed the next week and it was questionable for the week after. Like, and like I know people keep saying like he's mobile in the pocket and I don't necessarily disagree with that. My problem with him in the pocket is he moves when he doesn't need to. Like we'll get uh-huh. into that a little bit too. And he keeps trying to make these like off platform throws. And I'm like, bro, you can't make that. You don't have the arm talent for that. Like I'll show I the know. difference. Like, like we'll see the difference between like him throwing with his feet in the ground and him throwing with like when he had, doesn't have his feet set, like, and it's night and day. Uh-huh. And like, you know what I mean? And, and again, there's a lot of times where he just does it unnecessarily and he runs himself into pressure. So, it's uh it's some interesting tape. It's definitely definitely interesting for sure. Yeah, because that's the first thing I noticed when I watched him is just I didn't know how weak his arm was. I didn't know that it was that weak. <laughs> um even like the Cleveland game, um, when I did I did a breakdown for members in the Cleveland game, he has this story to Michael Pittman too, where he gets Michael Pittman hitting the legs, and it's like it's a drag route, okay? It's a drag route. And like uh Grant Delpit is way in the back of the end zone. But and he's just throwing a drag and the way the ball floats. And by the time it gets to Pittman, here comes Del Pitt and go boom right in his legs. And I was thinking, like, damn, if you just hit, if you just have some zip on it, you might have scored a touchdown on that play. So yeah, man, it was I, I didn't watch his game against Cleveland. So what is a drag route and he throw it deep and into the safety? Yeah, yeah, man. He like let this it is into the same it. it's the same one. We're gonna see that again. It was literally. I don't know why I'm getting excited for that, but I'm like laughing because I'm like, that's like when you're describing it. I'm like, this is the same play. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe part that was part of the reason why Michael Pittman took so long to sign. He's like, hey, are you guys bringing this guy back? <laughs> He's like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm, don't don't do that. See, see, the thing is, is it, it's like read wise and like knowing an offense. He does it is not that bad, right? It's not like he can. He does pretty good. He understood what to do in uh, St. Steichen's offense. He really knew what to do and like the zone reads and all that stuff. He actually ran it pretty well. It's just, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, man, we can't throw down field, right? You can't throw down the field. Your Trey Tucker is basically gone. Yeah. I mean, Alec Pierce is just basically like this. So you're like, oh, what the hell? All year, right? And then, uh, and so there's no Trey Tucker if you start Gardner Mitchell. That's the problem. And then, you know, I don't know how, you know, Devontae and those boys are really going to feel. I don't know how they're going to really feel about it. You know, it, it, you're just going to be able to tell because in practice, if you watch, I bet if you watch AOC and Minshew in practice, the team's going to be like, don't be stupid here, Antonio. You probably <laughs> tell Antonio, like, bro. You'll be like, last year all over again. <laughs> don't do this to us. I, I, actually, I can't wait to Devontae Adams 
the documentary I, that is must watch tv i cannot yeah, wait for that'd that. be interesting Oh with everything God. yeah between oh, that yeah that's what we should have talked about too even though it's not film i mean yeah. between the quarterback controversy and the joshua daniels that's gonna be it's gonna be some must see tv i'm looking forward to watching that that's gonna be fun yeah yeah it's gonna be fun because even like him even going into aiden o'connell and so, I, I know, the chiefs game and stuff like that I, i'm super interested in how he feels about that and you know he is he doesn't care so I, he's gonna be uncut just letting it out, letting his whole feelings out. It's going to be great to watch. This must sit, watch TV. I can't believe he was being followed this year. I can't believe Josh McDaniels yeah. let that happen, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> knowing how that team went. Like, we might even get the team meeting. Are we going to get the secret meeting? You know what I mean? I wonder if – Ooh, is that gonna be on that'd TV? be sweet. And we can find uh, out if AP actually did, <laughs> did say – Because you know the, the, yeah. the cameras are there. I mean, if you watch the quarterbacks, they follow everything. That means yeah. the cameras were in that meeting. So we're going to get – the full on I can't wait, bro. I can't I can't wait. Yeah. This is maybe a, that was like, oh wow. I can't believe that actually Josh McDaniels even let that happen. Yeah. <sighs> and you know, he got cut and he got fired, so he can't even control like what's on it. So sorry, Josh. <laughs> sorry, man. All right. Uh anything else happened on really nothing else really going on right now. It's just pretty slowness. Uh let's get into Garfield Ministry, man. Let's uh, I'm doing Alex Madison. I guess just talk about Madison a little bit. Um uh, Madison is interesting because he's a zone back, but he's not good at it. And <laughs> at the end of the year, they turn him into a gap runner. So I'm going to show that. And he's actually not bad at that. He's not a bad gap runner, right? So he's a totally different guy. He does have some good uh, zone runs, but it's weird because then, you you know, after watching Tyrone Tracy, right, and then you watch Alex Madison, he just basically just like – it's like he's trying to run power. Like I feel like there's more patience behind zone running and he's just like running full speed behind like uh cj ham who's just fullback he'd be running like full speed behind him i'm like bro you gotta read it you just can't run to a hole you know what i mean so um and, and he, he really can't catch so it's I don't, I don't know what he's going to actually bring to the team after watching the film so it was interesting to see how much the what that was like but yeah it was just it was a little it was a little underwhelming but i mean he he, he runs hard i'll say that he runs hard. Yeah. <laughs> he does run hard. Maybe too hard. Maybe too hard for zone. Let's say that. You got to have a little bit more patience, man. You got to read it first. You just can't go, you know, and then and then try to find it. You know, it just doesn't work like that. So, yeah, it, it's it's interesting film. But uh, we'll we'll see how that goes. If they, if they decide to go gap, I mean, it feels like we got two gap running backs in here. So I don't know what that plan is. If they plan to go zone, I don't know. They might have to draft somebody. So we'll see. Interesting. All right, but let's get into some Minshew, bro. Let's get into some Minshew. To some Minshew? Mm -hmm. All right. Get the Minshew mania going. Mm -hmm. All right, you got me up there? Yeah, we're good to go. All right. So, yeah, one thing we're going to kind of like see a lot here, and again, kind of this first play, we're going to see it. A little bit of what I was talking about with uh, him in the pocket management, like, he does get some little a little bit of pressure here. I mean, I don't know. Pass rush does start to hit home, I should say. I don't really know if there's actual pressure. Like, no one's really winning. I mean, I guess around the edge. But if anything, he ends up running into it mm -hmm. and just scrambles around. And, I mean, this is actually one of his better throws on the run. So, me talking about him on the run, this is not the great uh, greatest first clip for me for that take. But you'll see what I mean in a little bit. But, again, like, you can mm -hmm. kind of see what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, this is – a fairly clean pocket or as clean as a pocket can get in the NFL. And the only reason why pressure starts to come is because he kind of runs into it and we yeah. start dancing around. Don't set our feet. Now, again, this is the one, one of the few good balls that he does throw on the run. But this clip is where you're going to see a little bit more. What I'm talking about again, clean pocket doesn't set his feet and you'll get a better angle of the view here uh, from the end zone, a better angle of the throw here, excuse me from the end zone, but same kind of thing. Like, I guess he sees the stun or whatever, or feels that, and thinks there's going to be pressure coming. But again, he just made his tackle's job harder by leaving it. And like, if anything, he get, gives this guy a um, a free lane to come hit him. Mm -hmm. and I don't know if that's maybe because he's like doesn't think he has the arm strength to get it to the <laughs> this drag route, so he's trying to make the throw easier or what. But we don't have our feet in the ground, and I mean, here's the ball right at the ten here, right at. The, the the top of the one and here's our target like we're nowhere clear nowhere near the, near our throw and two it's not exactly a great decision too like 
see the thing from this angle. Like, that's not really open. I, I wonder if he can't see. I mean, I, I, this moment, every time I go to the short quarterback, like he can't, he can't see it. But it's probably why he moves. Because I see that sometimes too. Maybe, he moves. maybe. Now here, a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Now, again, I don't think he needs to do this much movement, but do get a little bit of pressure here. We can probably just take one side step again, keep our feet in the ground, but at least that time, get our feet set. And that's, I mean, a decent ball. I mean, that's about as good as you're going to get from from Minshew throwing down the field. But one thing I want to point out too, and you'll notice this a lot too if you pay attention to the receivers. Alex Pierce jumps, but he catches this in the chest. Yes, it's a little bit higher, and this does help him make the catch. But he also does that because he's got to slow down for it. And like you guys mm-hmm. will see a little bit too, like especially on curl routes, you'll notice it. Like receivers are pretty constantly waiting for the ball and waiting for it to get there, and that's part of the, the issue, which is not having a strong arm. Is like, he, he put his whole all? Kind of he down. put his all into that throw too, man. That was <laughs> go back, go back. You can see it from there. See from this side. It's, his whole body's in that throw, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not effortless. Let's Overstended say that. Overstended past the front foot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, I think we'll get an angle of it, too. Like, see him almost finish it too much. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, normally you want that front foot staying in the ground. But, again, when you got to push it out there and shot put it out there, mm-hmm. sometimes you got to do those things. Now, again, all right. So this is another thing that bugs me. Golden rule quarterback is you do not drift in the pocket past 10 yards. Again, no pressure. Let's back this up a little bit. We got no pressure coming, but at the top of his drop, I mean, he's at 12 yards at this point. And again, no pressure. If anything, just step up into the pocket and make this throw. Now, what I do like is he's not forcing it down the field, Mm -hmm. but this is where things get wonky. Like, what are we doing now? We have a clean pocket. We're drifting back to, to 12 yard depth, making it easier for those edge rushers and harder on our tackles. And again, try and throw it off our, our off platform for no reason. And look what happens to the ball, it sails on him. And that's like a big part of his like issues is when he doesn't have his feet in the ground, he doesn't have the arm strength and the arm talent to make these types of throws. And this is what I'm talking about. Like, Dude, just step up in the pocket. Like, you don't need to do all this. No one is winning. No one is winning. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. He's uncomfortable in the pocket. Yeah. He's his it's it's like his internal clock like expires and he panics. Like he gets to three seconds in his head and he's just like, oh crap, someone's coming, even though no one is. And it's just it gets frustrating watching him on film because I'm like, I don't you get happy feet in the pocket. You're dancing Next around. Time. He has Pierce open. I mean, he, he probably could have. I don't know if he to be. That's upset. I don't know if he had the arm to hit Pierce on that throw. I don't know if you go back a little bit. Yeah, let me see. So we got I Pierce mean, in the bottom of the screen here. Yeah, in the, in the corner on the sail. Because I mean, they're kind of running sail, I think. And he has him. I don't know if he has the arm to make that throw though. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I will say that's what, like that is one thing that like uh, I do like about his game is he he under you can tell he knows he doesn't have a good arm. Like we'll see another play in, in a few here where he hasn't like again Pierce open down the field, but he doesn't even try and make that throw because he just can't. He so he knows how he's built, and that's one thing I will give him. But yeah, not having an arm has comes back to bite him cons- pretty consistently. Like you are not gonna get many uh two safety coverages in in uh against Gardner Minshew. All right, so this one's probably one of his better deep ball, ball throws of the of the that we're gonna see. Now again, clean pocket this time. Didn't hit the timer expire, and we got our feet set in the ground, so it's better. Mm-hmm. But even so, like this is kind of what I'm talking about, where like you see his receivers. Now this is a drop, and it needs to be caught. Don't get me wrong; I'm not trying to make that excuse, but like just put it on him and in front of him, and instead he kind of throws it over the back shoulder. Like we'll see it from the end zone, like. So this is like one of the things that kind of bugs me about him is even his good throws. You're like, yeah, but a little bit mm-hmm. like, that's not great. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Like if you, if he puts this ball like here, right? Plenty of room on the 35 or whatever and leads the receiver. 
it's an easy catch, but he throws it over the shoulder and that makes it tougher. Now, again, this is the NFL ball needs to be caught, Mm -hmm. but this is what I'm talking about where it's like, this is the difference between completions and incompletions and good and great quarterbacks. Like if this ball is on that 35 and in front of him leading as receiver, this is an easy catch. Make this safety miss and it's a touchdown. Instead, he's kind of got to outstretch his arms a little bit, go over the over his uh, outside shoulder. And it's just that's a tougher catch to make. Yeah, Again, still got to be made in the NFL, but for what we're talking about with uh, with Gardner Minshew, like this is one of the issues, especially with a backup tight end. He, that's a tough catch for a backup tight end. Yeah. Now here we go. Here's a little bit better too. And one thing I will say is. I'll say he's solid at throwing with anticipation, which can help with the arm strength, especially on throws like this one. Like he's thrown this right before we've even, uh, I think that's Pittman is even in that window. And I mean, he ends up getting it back through the linebacker and we'll see from the end zone view here. He, like he does a pretty good job manipulating. Uh, I think this is, uh, I'm not going to say his name. 48. Is it Tavi? 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 I don't know. Yeah, linebacker. Yeah. Tavi, yeah. So. Tavi. Yeah, I think I'll, um, but like you can see, like, looks at the linebacker, snaps his head around, and then throws it real quick. And that's why that linebacker can't make the play on it. Mm-hmm. So, like, this is what I like about, it. like, a little bit of his game, like, a little bit of eye manipulation. But we'll see from the back end where his arm strength, again, comes into play because Pittman is going to catch this on his back hip, and it's just a velocity issue, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ideally, Pittman would be catching this in stride and keeping running. But – since Gardner Minshew is not great and good enough at throwing with anticipation and he has a weak arm, it's behind him and he can't add on, add on extra yards after the catch. Yep. All right. Get some anticipation on this one too. A little bit of pressure, but here's even what I'm talking about too. Like this is what I'm talking about with the curl route. And also this is a terrible push off by Pittman too. <laughs> but like you can see, like right now, waiting on it, waiting on it. You can see how long the ball kind of gets there. Ideally, like he turn around and he's throwing his hands up and catching it. Yeah. But he's sitting there waiting on it. Because again, just doesn't have that strong of an arm. And that time Minshew doesn't scramble. It, it doesn't make any sense. He's gotten a little pressure and he doesn't even move. <laughs> That's the other thing. Like, sorry to get on a tangent here. Like, right. Like this throw, like we damn near have a free rusher with this linebacker coming. Mm-hmm. And like he doesn't, he's like, right. We got Taylor going the wrong direction. He's not really that bothered by pressure, but for whatever reason, he gets happy feet in the pocket. Like he will stand in the face and take one of the shot. I mean, mm-hmm. take a shot or whatnot, but for whatever reason, he still gets happy feet in the pocket. I, I don't know many people that I've seen or many quarterbacks that I've seen have that combination. No. <laughs> I'm curious weird. what you thought about. Him. So I'm curious for like this clip what you thought about him being able to see the middle of the field, because like this one for me, like that was one thing in the games I watched. I'm like, I feel like he was missing guys over the middle of the field, which might be like what you're talking about earlier with him, not being the tallest guy in the world, mm-hmm. but like the Pats are running cover one here and they blitz the middle linebacker. who's the middle hook defender. Yeah. We have a hook route on third and two. Now I know Jabril peppers is, you know, going to be closing in on this, but you just throw this low and like, let your guy protect himself. Mm-hmm. And then this is the first down. Yep. Instead, we don't see it. We do some more scrambling, and we throw it away on third and down and end up. Oh, and like yeah, that's, that's just that's like, knowing your hot rod. You gotta know your hots. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and especially again in a short yarded situation, we'll get into a little bit more of these good. This this Pittsburgh game was better, although we will get the uh, the play I was talking about earlier uh, soon. Like, he made some nice throws. Like, again, decent anticipation here. And, again, this is what I'm talking about with him in pressure. Like, he's going to face some pressure here, and he just rip, lets it rip. Like, mm-hmm. why do you have happy feet if you don't care about getting hit? <laughs> that's, that's, that's a great point. That's, that's <laughs> like, a great That's a great point, bro. I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. it makes, and this is a good ball. This it is, is like one of the ones where ball. I'm not sitting there, like, saying, like, like, this. yeah, but this is a good ball. Now just stay in the damn pocket. Yeah. It's a good ball. Because he's not inaccurate. I mean, he shows some inaccuracies, but he he, he is okay with accuracy. It's, it's not like something I'm like, oh, he's just so inaccurate. You know what I mean? For real. And this is actually one of my favorite plays of him. And again, facing pressure, takes a hit and doesn't mind. 
But like this is it's like, all right, this is good pocket management, right? We got TJ Watt, sack master right there. Get some pressure. There we step up. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Now, probably should hit Alec Pierce here. Like ideally, we'd be able to make that throw, but this is what I was talking about earlier. He knows how he's built. He knows he can't make this throw, especially on the run. So mm-hmm. he turns it down, keeps his eyes downfield, gets those feet in the ground. And I mean, look at the difference. I think that was a good ball. Gets it over that little uh this corner here that's like starting reading it on the scramble drill. Like, it's a nice throw. Again, it's it's frustrating to watch because you'll see plays like this and be like, all right, I can see where people are talking about when like they like his pocket management and his, his ability to move or his mobility. But then again, we'll see the other plays like we did saw before where he just went around for no reason. Yeah. So get a nice view from the end zone. How nice little touch on that. Get that yeah. over that guy. We can make a big play. Him and Pittman had a good rapport. They did. Yep. Except for uh for this one. <laughs> oh dear lord. Oh, <laughs> oh, I remember this. I remember this. Oh, <laughs> And this is what I was talking about. Like it's the same. Uh, like it sounds like the same thing you were talking about from the Browns. Uh, like I can't even watch this. He's got the drag, and yes, he does have to throw it deeper, right? He's got the. But again, I, I think it's because he doesn't have a good arm. He's got to float it, and he th- floats it into the safety and makes Pittman lay out. And good dude. That that dude got. I think he got suspended for that hit. Did he? I think that guy got suspended or something. He got ejected. I, yeah. If it wasn't that one, like this one was like part of it. Like it was like a serious series. And also, props to Pittman. I think he held on to this. I, I don't know how, but holy hell. But yeah, this is what I'm talking about. This literally put Michael Pittman in the hospital. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, so man. That's what I get a little, wor- a little worried about. I'm sure Devontae, if he watches that play on film, hopefully he does. <laughs> he might be. That like, was on national. We all saw that. that was on national TV. I remember that. I was like, oh. oh okay. All right. All right. Let's all go. Right. I promise we get, we only got a few left, and it'll get better. But again, at right. a time. This is what I'm talk- talking about, dude. Like this is a great throw. Again, doesn't have a great arm, so it kind of it barely gets to the target. Mm-hmm. But look, get some pressure, sidestep. In the face, doesn't care, changes the arm angle and delivers the ball. It's like great, great catch, too. Yeah, another and great job digging it out by Pierce. But like, this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is good pocket management. Mm-hmm. But those other plays earlier, I, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, okay, we got one more bad one before we end on a high note. All right, RPO. Right. Yeah, again, feet, the feet. Get an RPO. And then for this time, when TJ watched the free rusher, I guess, and he's the read man on the RPO, mm-hmm. um, he just gets a little scared and whatnot and ends up choking the throw or sailing the throw, I should say. Mm-hmm. But it's it's with his feet, man. For whatever reason, he just has instances that can't really explain and just gets worried and pressure and, and panics a little bit. All right. Which one we got here? Oh, yeah. I remember this one. Again, anticipation not great. You can see, I think it was Mo Alley Cox. Kind of have to wait on the ball. But Mm -hmm. nice little layered throw over that same, I think that was that same guy, the same corner. We're putting on six points. Again, feet in the ground, staying in the pocket, not moving unnecessarily. And he can be a decent quarterback. Not the best velocity on the ball. But again, he keeps those feet in those ground. And he stays in the pocket. Like he can be a decent quarterback. Like you said, he's not a bat or he's not terribly inaccurate um, for the mm-hmm. most part. Obviously, gonna have always gonna have the shortcomings with his uh, with his arm strength. But there is some stuff to like. It's just which guy are you gonna get? You're gonna get the guy that as soon as three seconds hits, he's gonna start scrambling around and try and play hero ball, or you're gonna get the guy that's gonna sit in the pocket and not be afraid to t- take one in the chops and and throw it uh, around guys. So, I don't know. Interesting player, that's for sure. See, see that's interesting to me because I, I felt like when I watched him on film at home, he actually played better than he did on the road. On the road, he was bad. Like, all the games you watch on the road, like Maybe. Cincinnati, he was pretty bad. Then, you know, you know, watching the Patriots game, he's doing all these weird stuff, moving around. He did the same thing in Cincinnati and Tennessee. He was just, like, moving around, taking unnecessary sacks and stuff like that. And then the Cleveland game, 
Um, it was a lot better. I mean, there's still his quirks are there. I mean, it's, it's just not going to change. But, I mean, they put up 38 points and on, on a, one of the best defenses in football. Good defense. And, yeah, and he, and he was hitting those guys. And Stride had some big plays, had some big touchdowns. So, you know, it's interesting that he played better at home than he yeah. did on the road, which is just weird. I don't know what that's about. You know, I me mean, is a little partier, so you'll never know. He went to Nashville, and he, he should be. I could see Gardner Minshew having a great Friday night mat in Nashville. So, just say it. But uh, yeah. the, the <laughs> Patriots game I was showing earlier was in Germany, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe he, he had beer hall or something like that the next floor. <laughs> see, it all comes together. Man. That makes sense. Man. He hit that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got some of the, the uh, great German beer. Germany just is a great beer, man. I had some at Epcot a couple times. So uh, uh, <laughs> I don't blame you, Gardner. But, yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of my thing. It's, my thing is, is he just he feels like a backup. You know what I mean? When I watch yeah. it, I'm like, sure, if if my starting quarterback got hurt, I would feel pretty good if Gardner Minshew came in there and played like three or four games and then my starting quarterback came back in, right? Yeah. I would actually feel pretty good about that. As a backup quarterback, great it's just yeah. when we get to like are you gonna start a whole season that's when i get like you know that's what i would i, I would he, re- go ahead i was gonna say he's just not consistent enough to be a starter <laughs> like that's that's a lot of times the difference between especially at this level the difference between the starting quarterbacks and the grid ones like you can see guys like that have their eyes that go out and have good games like jacoby Brissett's kind of like that too jacoby yeah. Brissett will have a great game one week and then the next week he'll fall off the cliff look at josh dobbs last year for whatever reason, the, this first two games with his teams, he was lights out and making plays left and right. Then all of a sudden he falls off a cliff. And I think that's kind of what that speaks to what you're saying. It's like he's just not consistent game to game or even down to down, where that's where the difference uh, the difference a lot of times between being a starter and a, and a backup in the NFL is. Yeah, because I, I would rather have Josh Dobbs. If it, was, if it was between him and Minshew, I probably would have rather have him because even if they – want to you know run a system and they draft somebody that they want to do some zone re stuff and i mean josh dobbs could run those things and he could kind of keep that mm-hmm. offense going a little bit so if you know bringing him up because i know he he went to uh the 40 did he go to niners yeah, yeah the niners. The niners. so so i mean that's, that's a good backup for them right and he he's he's a top level backup too in my opinion i, I think he's a he's a guy that if you your quarterback goes down, you could bring him in for a couple of games. But when you get to game four, that's when it gets to the problem is when you get to game four and game five and teams have tape on you, it becomes a little different because, you know, Gardner Minshew and, you know, um, you know, when they beat the Raiders and he barely played that, he barely did anything that game. They had to go to the Houston the next one and he had to do something and he didn't do anything, right? He just got outplayed by CJ Stroud all game. So um, that's the thing. He's just, he feels like a backup. He Is he a high level backup? Yes. Do I want him playing? 17 games no that's how i feel about it. that's really how i felt when i watched him it's like yeah we, we, we could make it work for a couple games but yeah you never know and and you know and, and shane steichen is uh you know i, I you know I, I i i don't mind luke getsy that much i'm not gonna say that but he, he's not shane steichen let's just say that I, I was watching some of the stuff that shane steichen does he has like all these rpos that they do like you you, you had that one the slant one, he has one where they do like a, a quick one to the tight end. They got a, a hitch one. They got all types of RPOs that they run over there. So um, it's a lot of disguise that he does. And Shane Steichen is, is one of the best uh, play cars in football. And he did a lot with Gardner Minshew. And, you, you know, you know, people get like, what did he what did Getsy do with Fields? Like, okay, well, what does he get to do with Minshew? So that's kind of yeah. my little pushback on that, too. It's like. You know, we don't have Shane Steichen over here. If we had Shane Steichen, I feel a lot better, probably. You know, but <laughs> yeah, no, I can see, it. I can hear you. What's interesting too is when I was asked, asking the, one of our the Colts guy at SB Nation like about it, and I guess like Steichen like didn't necessarily want to run all those RPOs, but that was what Gardner Minshew was good at. Um, so like they kept running it more and more often. So again, speaks to speaks to what Shane Steichen's able to do as a play caller versus you know. With Getzy again, I don't hate Getzy. We took broken down earlier, and I actually like a lot of what one of the stuff he does. But the one knock on him is he took forever to finally adapt his offense to what Justin Fields' skill set was. So I don't know if mm-hmm. I can be confident that he'd do the same thing or he'd do it differently with with uh, with Gardner Minshew. You know, it's kind of one of those things where I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> uh, yeah, do. yeah, because they didn't do any RPOs with Justin Fields, right? They didn't do anything yeah. like that. They did a lot of zone read, did some you know QB powers, QB counters, all that stuff, but they didn't do any. RPOs I mean, and there's a lot of them. So that's interesting. See, but that's what I'm talking about. How Shane Steichen is, is such a, a great play caller 
because he knows that, okay, I got Gardner Minshew. How can I make him successful? Yeah. Right. So it says like the Bucky books cheat, you know, but there you go, Bucky. You got Shane Steichen. He does it. He, he, how do I make a quarterback successful? I mean, he did it with Jalen Hurts too. Uh, you know, had Jalen Hurts. He did run a lot of those RPOs. He did run with Jalen. So, um, you know, and, you know, you see how Jalen, Jalen almost outdueled Patrick Mahomes with Shane Steichen. So <laughs> it, it, it is, is it, that's the, that's the issue with me too. Is like Steichen's not coming with us. So how does, how do they, bring Minshew along and make him comfortable so he could be successful. So plus one of the things that stood out to me when we were breaking down or when you were breaking down Getsy's offense is like we were talking about all this diverse like deep passing uh concepts out the window. God. <laughs> no sir. No sir with Minshew. Like you gotta you, like that's the thing that worries me is I'm like like did Getsy watch this and be like, yeah that guy's a fit for what I want to do and does that mean he's going to change what he, what he wants to do and how he likes to do it in the past? But yeah, I, 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 I wonder uh, how Telesco feel, felt about him in the first place. Like maybe Telesco really likes him as a Telesco guy, or maybe because you know, they, they, you know, it's one of those things too where like they played against him. It's just like they played against Madison too. They played against these guys and they're like, oh, maybe, you know, something's there. I don't know. Maybe AP likes Minshew. Maybe he likes his Moxie. His toughness because he's a tough guy. He's yeah. a tough dude. I'm not. I'm not gonna give it like he's a tough guy. He's all he's taking hits and stuff like that. He's not scared. So um it's interesting, but yeah. I don't know if I want him playing 17 games. Because <laughs> because say if he's QB one anyways, I mean we'll probably see AOC at some point. You know what I mean? That's kind of how I feel about <laughs> it. All right, <laughs> all right. Um, let's get into Alex Max. Let's get into Max. All right, I'm up there, right? We're good. Yeah, you're good. All right, so uh, we're gonna start off with uh, outside zone first. Uh, look at his zone runs here with Alex Madison. So we're gonna start off with this one here. So this is what I talk about him. He he loves to press the hole before he like finds these cutbacks and stuff like that. So see, so he kind of pressed it a lot more than he could have just cut back a lot quicker. So if you like watch Josh Jacobs or somebody like this, Josh Jacobs is gonna pause right here. And he's gonna go right here, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's you see he presses the line and he kind of gets there a little late. He gets to this cutback a little bit late, and it, it does it becomes a shorter gain than it actually could have been, in my opinion, if he hit this earlier. So there there is a little bit of can he run outside zone consistently and effective, right? This is a, some great blocking from the Vikings. You see, this guy's getting thrown on the ground, but then he still only got about five yards on that, and feel like he could have got more if he read it quicker. So I just show it one more time. So it's, it's got, I mean, because that's what it is. It's like you, you just can't press this quickly. You got to be a little bit more patient. Is it, I know it's lead outside zone, but you still got to don't press it and then cut back. You got to be cutting back like right now, especially yeah. uh, you got Derek saw. He's about to kill that guy off. And if you're hitting it, you're going full speed already. But you see he kind of he's already next to this lineman already. And he has to avoid him a little bit, slows him down. And he's not very fast. <laughs> Just as All right, here we go. Some more outside zone. Can see Bears here. See this one. So th this one he does a good job. I mean, because Irv Smith does a has a great block there. And that's not Irv Smith. I don't know who that is. I think it's I don't know Conklin or something. Has a great block there. Oh no, that's Johnny Munt, the best third tight end in the league. Oh, nice. okay, I see. Because that's you can block. Look at this. this look at him just throw ninety into the ground. Look at that. <laughs> but 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 this is what I'm talking about. Like it took him a while to get outside. Like I, I feel like because you know there's three options here. You can go cut back, just go straight, or you can bounce right on an outside zone. But it's, it, it took so long for him to hit this bounce. I feel like if he just bounced it right away, which he should have seen with this guy getting tossed to the ground. You got Darisaw coming up on, um, you know. Uh, Number nine, the safety from Penn State. I can't, yeah, uh, from uh, Penn State there. And I think he could have hit the outside a lot quicker. And I feel like he just pressed the line when he didn't have to. He could have just saw that his outside's open right away and could have went right out to that side. But got some good yards because the blocking was good. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's okay. It's a little bit of a struggle with him here. He, he does. It's not awful, but you could you, you could see later why they switched. 
um, here. I need a little bit of it. Let me see what we got here. Switch out the shotgun. Back side here. Right, so get some more outside zone here. And, and you see, once again, he presses, a, right? He does a better job on this one. He's able to turn it up because it's a great hole here. But it, it, you think also you can see like the lack of burst a little bit. Yeah. Because he should, it, this should be a bigger game. Yeah, I was sitting right? there waiting for him right now to just break out, and that could be be six but yeah you know what i mean it's just you can see that the lack of explosiveness a little bit like he runs hard but it's just it's just not very fast so right it's just not i mean he's getting flipped over <laughs> so it's it's just it's, it's it's not his forte to do this that's why you can tell he's more of a gap guy because he, then he could just run forward and he just run behind all his power here See a little bit on this one. Uh, you know, the cutback is a little bit there. It's there, but he kind of takes a while to get to it. Right? So his zone here. So that cutback's right there. Yeah. Probably right. bounce it. Yeah, he, he could have. But you see he's just kind of late to it. And then, it, it you know, it gets like six or seven, but it could have been a bigger play. Right. And, and and this is why, you know, he's he's he was averaging like beginning of the year, he's averaging like two yards a carry. Right. And it's a lot of this is why. I mean, even in this game, he has like 18 carries for like 80 yards, something like that. So it wasn't it was not the best game for him either there, too. You see it here. So this is another one, which you know I don't know, him and cousins have like a bad a little bit of, I think cousin slips a little bit here. Yeah. Right. So a little bit of a bad exchange. Yeah. But even this one, like, there's the cutback. Yeah. Outside zone, there's the cut. There it is. I mean, and it, 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 how 22 is crashing? Yeah. And I don't and know if it would up to pre-snap, too. I mean, the pre-snap look, it's already, like, they're overloading the weak side. Like, that should be mm. almost an auto cutback, especially on a weak side run when they have, like, a 4 on 4. And yeah, and it's, it's blocked up so well over here, too. That I mean, nobody is really over here. That he, if he was patient, he could hit that, but he overrun CJ Ham, right? And then it just ends up being nothing. So I mean, that's what like if they brought him in to be his own back, I'm, uh, I'm like, what film did you watch? That's kind of my <laughs> thing. It's like, I, I hope they didn't like, hey, we're gonna make this dude his own back, and we're gonna make it happen that way. I really hope that wasn't the case, um, just because it's just not something that he does very well. All right, you see here again, there's another cutback. Mm. Right? And even if this guy's right here, uh, Tremaine Edmonds, right? And this guy's coming right. Is This is better than a loss. This is probably like six yards maybe. It's better than a loss, but instead we're getting a two, uh, no gain, one yard loss instead. So this is what I'm talking about with, with the outside zone here. You know, then this might not. This, this no, that's cool plenty cool. Uh, is that what that is? That what that is? Yeah. Well, kind of. It's pull. Yeah, lead, yeah, yeah. Pull lead. Pull lead. Yeah, yeah, pull lead. There you go. So yeah, pull lead here. I'm like, that's not outside zone. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but even then, even then, still, <laughs> you know, it's just not the most impressive thing in the world. There you go. And here we get like a, a kind of outside zone. I just I just like this design. Oh, I just went too far. Let me go back. I like this. I like this uh, creativity here from Kevin O'Connell. Get him behind. Get a little running start on the toss. All right, but but this this will talk about his vision here on some of these runs. It's like man, look at that. And he's gonna he's gonna, yeah. I mean this is this is probably gonna be a hold regardless. But he actually yeah. makes it even more of a noticeable hold. I <laughs> try and keep going outside. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he made it even more noticeable. And then, you know he makes that guy miss. He took his nine yards, but this is a huge play if he cuts this up. Like, look, yeah. he's got he's got eighty three ready to block him. He's got Darisaw coming up on six. Like, great block! Right? Damn, that was a hell of a rep by Darisaw. I put two dudes on the ground. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look away, way. Raiders fans. Look away. That, that could have been us. <laughs> This could have been us, bro. Could have been us. Oh, Jesus. 
<laughs> but, <laughs> but then we get to, uh we get some more power here so we started getting some duo right getting some more power some uh duo we'll see some counters here and he just reads it better like he just sees there's nothing here there's outsides wide open right he, he is not this decisive with outside zone boom he's out right out the gate outside he gets 16 right right out the gate i'll go back here a little bit and say right out the gate he sees it right away on the duo run boom bounce almost a hold there but you know good job 84 <laughs> that's why he's one of the best black and tight is in football look at that you take your hands off right there but you see it like that's how he is with power runs. So now we get a counter, right? So we're going to get a little counter run here. See, it's patient. Let's the block develop here. Let's the guy get the block there, and then he bounces it again. Ends up getting five or six here. I mean, this is a um, a pretty good play by the Broncos with the penetration here. All right? I mean, is getting pushed back a little bit here, right? But you see how he's patient. He lets the block develop, and then he goes outside. Because because he went a couple games where he was averaging like six yards per carry, but it's because they were changed the gap, and he mm -hmm. started. He looked a whole lot better. So here, here's another one. This we go wildcat. We're getting a counter on the wildcat here, All right? And kind of is a little fake. And then you even see that his vision is so much better too. So you see here he's able to set up a block, and then come back inside here. And he, he is a little slow, so he's not really. He, I mean. A faster guy probably scores a touchdown here, probably. I I admit. Would you see this? God damn, sixty-seven. What is that? Good lord. Wow. <laughs> Anyways, but damn. yeah, would you, would you would you see his vision is just better? Everything he runs so much better doing gap schemes. So like, it's a totally different back. You know, because it, it probably if you're a Raiders fan, you remember him just running all over the Raiders. It was because they switched <laughs> to gap. And you see it here one more time running some duo. And e even when guys get beat, he just runs better. Like he runs harder. Like he's spinning off guys. Yeah. He's just a to me, I think, back. Go ahead. To me, he thinks too much in zone. Just just mm -hmm. like because when we were first playing those clips, I was like, is his lateral movement terrible? But then we watch these and like a jump cut like that and like. No, he's actually pretty good. So I think he's like, when you give him more than two options, he just panics and doesn't know what to do. Yeah. And that's why I said, like, are the Raiders running gap? <laughs> like, did they watch the film? Where, like, he's a fit for us gap, or are they going to try to force him to run zone again? And I, that's what I hope they don't do. I hope they see these these type of runs, these duo runs, these things he's doing, and how you could actually maximize him a little bit running the football if you stick to a gap scheme with him. Yeah. Yeah, because because I remember watching when we did the preview, and I was watching this film. I'm like, yeah, man, he looks pretty good. <laughs> then when I watched the the beginning of the season, I was like, so what happened at the beginning of the year? It was that's what it was. He just running gap schemes. So let's get into him in, in the passing game. They tr it, this is something they tried to do too at the beginning of the year. They tried to make him Dalvin Cook. They tried their hardest to make him Dalvin Cook, guys. I'm, I'm telling you, <laughs> right? Everything Dalvin Cook does, you're gonna do. So he's gonna you know Dalvin Cook running like a little choice route. You're gonna run a choice route. I mean, he just he's just uh the ball catches him. Let's just say that. The ball catches him. You can see right here it's a uh, it's a pretty pretty decent catch there behind him, but it just he just doesn't have natural hands, as you would say. Yeah. Right. He doesn't have the natural hands you like. Here we go. This is probably his best hand catch you see on film. But even then you can tell like it feel like he's just concentrating it. There's a lot there. Cause he almost like slips. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I mean, it is, it's a, I mean, it's a good catch here. I also want to say that Kirk Cousins was balling last year. I did not know that when I was watching this. One guy. I was like, wow, this dude was balling. So bad for me. I hurt, man. But, but a lot of the catches like this, this is, this is pretty embarrassing guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's pretty soon. Just, <laughs> it's a, it, the ball catches him. He's a, he's a body catcher. Yeah, it's kind of yes, basically. It just <laughs> like and that ball just ate him up, bro. Like I don't, it, it wasn't throw that hard. Oh, well, it's Kirk Cousins. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. He just it was a nice little toss to him. It just it just, it, it just ate him up, bro. Like God, ugh, you know. Yeah. And then uh, this one's this one's even worse. This this one's pretty bad. 
say that they tried to make it they tried to make him down cook guys okay they tried to make him down <laughs> cook it just wasn't like <laughs> it just was it just eating him up <laughs> we'll say kirk didn't do him any favors at that ball so he should be on the other shoulder <laughs> he didn't do any favors though no, you're right you're right but man they, they tried to make him down and cook. It just, it just wasn't going to work. And that's why you saw uh, 32 Tyson Chandler play a lot more at the end of the year. Yeah. Because, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, I know, 50, I know 53's coming and he's about to pop him. You can see him look at 53. He just doesn't. Yeah. That's the old and saying. then going to hit you anyway. You might as well catch it. Yeah. And, and then blocking. He, it, it, he, this, is, this is why he stopped playing at the end of the year, too, because he, he's not a good blocker either. You can see here on this one. I mean, he tries to block these outside guys instead of these blitzers from the other side. You see it. He's not looking where he needs to be looking. That's why Darisaw, no, that's Darisaw's letting this guy go because Madison's, Madison's supposed to be right here. He's supposed to be looking and navigating, but he's over here when all these guys are covered. I don't know what he's doing. And then that just leaves a free rusher. Because if you go back, like, yeah, Dobbs has the attack from the outside. Right. Yeah, I think Support. he's. I think he's Sorry. okay there. He's just like because back go to the pre snap. Like assignment wise, because the because the most dangerous guy is the brisker on the edge. Mm -hmm. I just don't know why they put him so damn close to the line of scrimmage. They didn't really help do him any favors by doing that. I, I guess they thought Edmund. I guess they he thought Edmonds was going to come. And you it's see, he does a. Out. Yeah, he does a he does a he does a coffee house right here. It goes yeah. back and then comes up. Oh, so yeah, maybe yeah. that's it. That's just a great blitz call. Good lord. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But even then, uh, there there's some terrible blocks in here. I just uh, I didn't want to just yeah. kill the guy. So, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, guys, that's a uh, that is Alex Madison. Um, so that's the interesting part of this. It's like everybody's like, oh, he's own guys. Oh, it's old, it's old, it's old. And then you turn the film. It's like, oh, no, he's not. He's a, he's a gap runner. So what is our plan here? We doing counters. We're doing duos a lot. Uh, I mean, cause that's what Zemir White does. So Zemir White's better in the duo too. He runs duo pretty well. He runs those lead powers with the fullback. He's, he's right there. He's running right behind you. He does a good job on those runs. He's very patient and, and gap. And he kind of does the same thing that Madison does, which is he thinks too much. When he's doing zone, so um, yeah, so that's that was my thing when I was watching this. Is like, what are we doing scheme wise? How are we going to run the ball? Are we going to run a gap scheme? Is that the plan? Is that why you brought him in, or are you, or are you hoping that he can run outside zone again? Like that, that's. <laughs> I hope it's not the latter. Yeah. So that's the that that's the thing of watching the film because he well, he's a pure runner. Because he can't, he really can't do anything else. He can't do third down. He can't do catching. So, yeah, yeah. Was he, uh, was he better on inside zone, or they just, or they, I guess, the Shanahan trees a lot of outside zone and then gap to run inside, right? Yeah, yeah. So he he did run some inside zone too, uh, and he did pretty good on that too, man. So okay. that's the thing. Like he he can he can do like the duos and inside zones and the counters and those runs. He's good in a gap scheme. It's just, you know, if, if we are planning to run him in a zone scheme, it is not going to work. It didn't work for Kevin O'Connell. Kevin O'Connell thought it might work. And I don't know, maybe he ran, like, he, maybe he, you know, ran some good zones and some of those when he's coming in for duty for Dalvin Cook. But it was not working. And they had to basically kind of bench him to put him back as running back, too. And when he came in the game, they they did gap schemes and they would do outside zone with Tyson Chandler, Ty Chandler. So, Man, that's the thing. That's the interesting part of it. So, I, I don't. I, I was a little confused. I was. I was confused when I was watching it because it's like, if we're gonna, what are we doing in the run game? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. interesting too because like, I kind of felt like I wrote 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 about him and like Zamir White and comparing them too, and like kind of fell into the same trap. Like, you just look at the carries, like. He had like three or four times as many carries in, on zone runs than, than a, on, on gap. So it's interesting. I am curious. What do you think about his ability to make guys miss? Because I saw like the other part of it too that like kind of like led me to believe it, believe like believe that true just by looking at the data was like he was decent at like making guys miss, but not really good at adding extra yards after contact. So I'm curious mm -hmm. about what you thought about him being able to like, is he like a shifty guy or anything like that or not really part of the game? 
I wouldn't say he's shifty. I, I think he's hard to take down. I think he's a he, okay. just say he runs hard. He's gonna run really hard at you. Um, if, if you and if you are arm tackling, you will bounce off. I think that's you saw some of that on the film. It was it wasn't exactly him making guys miss. Is that if you come with the arm tackles, man, it ain't gonna work. And he's gonna okay. he, you're gonna fall off them and you're going to keep going and um it's just not going to be a good look for you that way so uh but like shiftiness and like making guys in this open field not really um it's more about like if you you just you have to get your arms around him to bring him down because he's going to keep moving and he like i said he runs hard it's, it's not like he's uh you know he's you know he's pussyfooting over there he's trying to get into the hole he's running hard right um, it's just like for outside zone. Sometimes you just can't run that hard, bro. You just got you gotta be more patient and read and react. So, um, yeah. But I mean, that that's really him, man. I, I I don't know what exactly what the plan is going to be in this in the run scheme. Now I'm more, I'm now I'm more confused. That's basically why I came out of this. Like, what are we, so same? What are, uh, what are we doing? <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. confused. <laughs> we got two. We got two. Uh, you know, gap backs, right? To do two uh, guys who run uh, gap power schemes, and mm -hmm. uh, we have a outside zone coordinator. So the best guy running outside zone is about to turn thirty-one, <laughs> and really <laughs> more third down back throughout his career. Yeah, I'm mean, doing. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so I don't know. It doesn't say uh, maybe they plan to draft somebody. I'm not hundred percent sure. Because or or they plan on running power, that, that could be the thing. If they if that's the thing, like great. Gap. Yeah. yeah, gap power, great. I that's fine. But if they plan on running zone, then uh, I don't know why they didn't go get Dante Foreman. I mean, Dante Foreman is just right there, you know. So gotcha. that's my thing because he that dude that runs outside zone. So <laughs> you know, I, I don't know how that, how that's really gonna go, but that was my thing. It was that was so interesting about it is that. I went into it thinking, okay, this is a zone back. And I came out thinking, oh, he's a gap back. And we are, yeah. So we'll see. This this is this is more, I want to see who they draft now at this point and what that guy can do, if they do draft a running back. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, yeah. Because I think they still need a guy that can, like, pass protect and and uh, and catch passes, like, contribute on third downs. Because... I know Abdul has been really good at it in the past, but the last few years, like just looking at the data, it's it's not been, it's not great. So yeah, uh, Abdul is willing. He 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 he, he, he tries. He tries. He's just he just he just gets ran over sometimes. He's just too small. <laughs> not an yeah. effort issue. It's an execution issue. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, Matt. Uh, any other last thoughts, man? Um, I mean. I don't know. I feel like we were a little bit down on the, the free agent signings, but obviously we got to the big one earlier and got ahead of that one. So I do think uh, I am still optimistic about it, but yeah, I will say I'm a little bit down on uh, Madison. I think just like you are. And I think a lot, like a lot of people surprising to not see him it's surprising to see him have so many zone carries and then not be like that special at it, but interesting to see. Maybe that's, maybe that's a clue for maybe they're, they're shifting to more gap scheme, despite what, uh, what gets he's done in the past. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, and, you know. And and Gardner Minshew, I think Gardner Minshew just he is what he is, right? So it's, it's not really that we're down on him. It's just he's, he is what he is, right? Uh, that's what kind of, <laughs> it is what it is. It, that's what's him. Madison was was a little more shocking. That, that was a little. It was just shocking because I was expecting his own guy, and he's a gap guy. So it's you know it, it is what it is though. But yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see what these Raiders do. Was, I mean, they obviously they like the team from last year. That, that's all I'm learning the most <laughs> they like those guys yeah. they do i mean they did better when they got josh mcdaniels out of the building so who knows maybe yeah you know, here's probably run for it. putting his putting his hand down you know putting you know time on the table for some of these guys right because we'll see how this goes man we'll see, we'll see. yeah the draft's gonna be interesting more, more i kind of get into we're free agency we're getting deeper the draft is gonna be interesting to see what they add so let's we'll see what they do all right guys uh we're out of here. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, and, uh, you know, check it out. Uh, I got Spencer Rattler up there. I got a Spencer Rattler video. Um, I got the one full clip for members. I did a whole hour. I, I, I lost time. I trying. So enjoy that. Um, and then we got the, the the mini breakdown on the on the regular channel without the members. I'm doing some Bo Nicks and stuff like that. I got a lot of requests. People want me to do like Michael Pratt. I'm like, you know, what? I'll do it. I got you guys. I'll do those guys for you. <laughs> um, so 
we'll get those guys done. And uh, yeah, man, uh, we'll be back this weekend doing some more stuff. And uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll do some draft stuff. Look at some, I don't know what position we'll look at. We'll figure that out. But it's going to be good. All right, guys. It's going to be great. All right. So like I said, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We're out of here. Peace.